So this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8. Now, I would normally consider myself an iPad user. I've been using an iPad almost daily for the past four to five years. But during that time, I've never really given the Android competition a fair chance, mostly because the majority of Android tablets are lower end budget oriented options, but not this one. The Tab S8 is truly a premium tablet in every sense from the specs to the build to the price tag, but does it do enough to win me over from the iPad? So let's start off with the design, and there's a few things I think the Tab S8 does better, and then other areas where I strongly prefer the iPad. So the build quality of the Tab S8 is excellent. Samsung went with their Armor aluminum frame, which they claim is 40% less prone to bending than the previous Tab S7. It feels sleek and premium in the hand, and it has some heft to it as well, coming in at about 10% heavier than the iPad Air. Taking a look around the rest of the tablet, we have a USB C port on the bottom and the power and volume button on the right side of the tablet. There's a fingerprint scanner combined within the power button, but we also have the option for face unlock. So you get the best of both worlds in terms of unlocking the tablet. One thing the Tab S8 has that you won't find on the iPad is up to one terabyte expandable storage with a micro SD card slot. We've never had that as an option on any iPad ever. And that's a huge advantage if you're someone who tends to fill up your storage pretty quickly. The biggest design difference between this tablet and the iPad is the aspect ratio. The iPad has always had its classic 4x3 ratio, while the Tab S8 goes with a more desktop-like 16x10 aspect ratio. And it's clear that this tablet was designed to be used primarily in a landscape orientation. The front-facing camera placement is a pretty obvious indicator of that. So for things like gaming and watching videos and movies, this works out really well. It fills up the display nicely and you have smaller borders than on the iPad. That being said, I feel that the iPad aspect ratio is more comfortable in most scenarios for a touchscreen tablet. I think it's because it's closer to that familiar eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, so it feels perfect for things like note taking or reading books whereas the Tab S8 feels a bit narrow to use in portrait orientation. The display on the Tab S8 is wonderful. It's actually slightly sharper than the iPad Air and Pro display with 276 pixels per inch versus 264 on the iPads. It gets fairly bright with 500 nits peak brightness and it has an adaptive refresh rate up to 120 hertz. So you get those nice smooth animations although I did notice more occasional hiccups in the refresh rate than I do on the iPad Pro. The speakers are really solid as well. I'd say close to the quality of the iPad Air, but I would probably give the Air the slight advantage. Okay, so my number one complaint about the design of the Tab S8 is the placement of the S Pen dock, I guess you could say. It's on this magnetic strip on the back of the tablet, and I find this really inconvenient. It doesn't lay flat on a table. It's way too easy to pop off when throwing it in a bag because the magnets aren't very strong. And for some reason, it's non-reversible, so you have to attach it the right way or it won't stick well and won't recharge. And I just realized a couple days ago that I can attach the S Pen to the side of the tablet, like on the iPad, which is great, but the only catch is that it won't recharge this way. The iPad's method of just attaching and charging the Apple Pencil on the side of the tablet is just much better. But let's go ahead and compare the S Pen to the Apple Pencil. In terms of aesthetics, the Apple Pencil has a very distinguished look to it, while the S Pen looks more like a generic stylus. The Apple Pencil is also longer, heavier, and has a wider diameter than the S Pen, and because of that, I think it feels slightly better in hand. But when it comes to the actual on-screen writing feel, the S Pen really impressed me. It just glides across the glass so nicely, and it's all thanks to its special elastomer tip. It has a much smoother feel than the hard plastic used on the Apple Pencil, and you don't get that clicky plastic on glass noise when writing. Both pens have excellent pressure sensitivity, tilt sensitivity, and palm rejection, all critical aspects of note taking and drawing. In terms of latency, I did notice the S Pen was slightly more responsive than the Apple Pencil on the iPad Air, 
probably because of the Tab S8's 120 hertz refresh rate. In slow motion, you can see that the S8 and the iPad Pro with their high refresh rate displays perform better than the iPad Air. Although in real time note taking, it's not a huge difference. But where the S Pen really excels over the Apple Pencil is with the additional functionality you get from the button on the side, as well as some gestures you can use. With the Apple Pencil, you can double tap to switch writing tools, you can switch color palettes, but overall, it's pretty basic. On the S Pen, you can just do a lot more. Certain apps have preset actions for the S Pen. So for example, in the camera app, you can use that button on the S Pen for remote capturing. You can also go into settings and customize all sorts of presses and gestures. These customizations and additional features really add a whole level of user experience to the Tab S8 that you just don't get on the iPad. Also, I really like how I'm able to use the S Pen as a total replacement placement for any touch input around the operating system, which might not sound that impressive, but on the iPad, it won't allow you to do certain things like swipe up to go home or access the control center. I'm pretty sure Apple does this to prevent unwanted swipes when drawing or writing, but I've never had any issues with it so far on the Tab S8, so I would love to see at least an option for that on the iPad. I decided to pick up this Slimbook keyboard cover to go along with my Tab S8, and it's pretty nice. The layout is a little small, but it's still more than usable with great key feel, and overall, I'd say it's definitely better than the iPad smart keyboard cover, which cost even more. When it comes to cameras, the Tab S8 has 13 megapixel wide and six megapixel ultra wide cameras on the back, as well as a 12 megapixel front facing camera. And these are fine if you find yourself in a situation where you need to take a photo or video on this tablet. So I was skeptical about how Samsung's One UI skin over Android 12 would hold up in comparison to iPad OS, but for the most part, I've been pleasantly surprised. One UI is a fairly minimal skin that's easy to navigate and really didn't take too long to get used to coming from the iPad. Multitasking is done really well, and I like how you can readjust the apps to be almost any size. On Samsung, you can also have an additional third app window, which is honestly a little cramped on this 11 inch display, but I could see that being really useful on the larger Tab S8 Plus or Ultra tablets. And I've got to give props to the Samsung Notes app. It hits most of the key points of a good note taking application with a clean and easy to use interface, a great file organization system, and of course, a nice variety of writing tools for handwriting notes. And since Notability and GoodNotes aren't available on Android at the moment, this is definitely my favorite note-taking app for the Tab S8. Performance on this tablet has been excellent. It's using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, so the same chip from the S22 smartphone lineup, and it keeps up with everything I've thrown at it from multitasking to gaming. It's not as powerful as the M1 chip in the new iPad Air, but for everything you'd use this tablet for, it's more than enough. Battery life has also been great. I'd say it's pretty similar to the iPad Air. I've been getting about two days of use with a few hours of screen on time each day. And when it comes to recharging, the Tab S8 is capable of charging up to 45 watts, but unlike all iPads, there's no power adapter included in the box. One of the features I was most interested to test out was Dex Mode, short for Desktop Experience Mode. So this is basically a different skin over Android that makes it more like a traditional desktop or Chromebook experience. This concept has so much potential, but after trying it out, it feels like it's not quite ready at the moment. First off, I haven't been able to get Dex Mode to go full screen on my external monitor with my Tab S8 which is weird because it does work in full screen with my S22 Ultra phone. So that's a big disappointment because I have these black bars constantly on the sides, kind of ruining the illusion of the desktop experience. There's also just a lot of quirks and inconveniences of using this mode, like how I can't click and drag to highlight text in Google Docs, the scroll wheel doesn't work in certain apps, just a lot of little things that make you realize you're not actually using a desktop operating system. So while it's not great at the moment and I don't really ever see myself using it in its current state, I'll be keeping an eye on this feature to see if it improves with time. The most limiting thing about this tablet and really all Android tablets is the lack of third-party apps. My number one most used iPad app, Notability, 
just isn't available on Android. Not to mention apps like GoodNotes, Procreate, and LumaFusion. Although LumaFusion for Android is supposedly in the works, so maybe we'll see that soon. In fact, the only creative applications that I used on my iPad that are also available on Android are Adobe apps but even those apps haven't been optimized as well as they have been on iPad. And you have to remember that third-party apps like these are essentially what makes the iPad so powerful. LumaFusion, for example, is miles ahead of any other mobile video editing application. So good luck finding a comparable video editing app on Android. The bottom line is that for higher end creative tasks, the app selection on iPad makes it a much more powerful device at least at the moment until Android catches up with their app selection. So do I recommend the Tab S8? I'd say if you're looking for a fast tablet with great hardware and you generally prefer an Android experience, then the Tab S8 is a great option. But for me, the iPad Air or Pro are just better options just because iPad OS is a step ahead of Android when it comes to tablets. But this could easily change in a year or two, so I'm excited to see what the future holds for the Tab series and Android tablets in general. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.